So New World, for anybody who doesn't know, is actually getting a massive expansion. They are increasing the level cap, they are adding in new dungeons, they are increasing the item cap, and they are changing a lot of things with the game. They are changing a lot of the end game activities, improving them, and so we'll take a look at what this video is about. New World is an MMORPG and they're adding that's mounts. had an interesting lifespan so yeah. far. During the beta phase, the red flags were obvious. The game released no, they in- weren't. No, they weren't because nobody would listen to me. Nobody would listen. To be fair, Lazy Peon also was making the same videos that I was, and we were both getting shit on by the community. September 2021, and initially at launch, was insanely fun mm -hmm. until about level 30 or so. Then it just fell off a cliff, with yeah. many people discovering game-breaking bugs, turning New World into a meme gold mine overnight. The devs didn't give up, though. I, I don't think that the bugs had anything to do with why people quit playing. I don't. I really don't. I think the reason why people quit playing is because it was too repetitive. Like, that's straight up why. And like, leveling slowed down so much. They went away and started addressing issues one by one, leading to the game having a major resurgence in player numbers yep. for its first major update, Brimstone Sands, in October 2022. Small uh, correction on that. Uh, the update, uh, the, the increase of players was actually because of the fresh servers, and uh, New World did like this whole huge event. And it was actually the fresh server event that happened after Brimstone Sands, but the fresh server event happened like maybe a few weeks or a month after the Brimstone Sands patch. They fumbled the event too. Yeah, there were some problems with it. Since but then, Brimstone New World has been hyped. rather quiet. People are really excited Over the course it. of the past year, it's been losing players again month yeah. on month, which is mainly due to no new big content. Well, let's Other see. Uh, let, let's see what where it's at right now. Charts. 17k i feel like yeah it's gone up a bit but it usually does on weekends not a lot to impress uh, impress me there and it looks like the game uh you know is it 18,000? like now it's pretty much not that great and uh it's just kind of chilling you know actually not bad no it's not awful no but it's not great either you know and so uh yeah for an mmo it's not doing super great and i think there's a lot of reasons to that but it's not like it's a dead game, but it's definitely a very small niche game that a lot of people... I, I think the worst thing about New World is the fact that so many people tried New World and they didn't like it or they had a bad experience. And like once somebody has a bad experience playing a game, they usually don't want to go back and try it again after it improves. And that's what's happened with, uh, I'm trying to think, like, that's what happened with WoW. Like, that's what happens with a lot of WoW expansions, is, like, the expansion comes out, it's fucked up, they fix it, people don't come back, right? That's just how it is. And Diablo 4, right? They improved Diablo 4 a pretty considerable amount. Uh, it's still not great, but it is improved, at least. And uh, nobody gives a shit. Because people have already decided that the game's bad. It's like once gamers make their mind up on something, it's very hard for them to change it. No Man's Sky and um, uh, old, not old school RuneScape, like Final Fantasy XIV, uh, these are the exception, not the rule. The MMO releases and players just running out of stuff to do. People are stubborn? Well, Recent it's not that people are stubborn. People don't like changing their mind. Because changing their mind means that they were wrong. And people don't like admitting they're wrong. People would rather double down on an opinion that they know is wrong rather than change their mind. Though New World has announced its first real it. expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth, I'm which will bring massive reasons. fundamental changes to the game, increase the level and gear score cap, as well as finally add mounts to the game. In this video, I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about the new New World expansion, as well as jump into the game now in its current state to prepare my character for the new content, as well as see what other cool changes have been added to the game over the past year. Yeah, I but think the trailer, by the way, was really good. First, today's sponsor, Dragon Raja. Dragon Raja is an anime-inspired MMORPG powered by Unreal Engine 4 that's available to play cross-platform on Android, iOS, and PC. Dragon Raja's just released a new patch, including the all-new warrior assassin class, Yasai, a class inspired by Japanese ninjas, with a large folding fan as the main melee weapon and the kunai as the long-range weapon. And if the ninja playstyle isn't enough for you, then there's 13 other classes to choose from. Whether you want to wreak havoc from range with the Visioneer class or ride straight into Why the action. Why is she wearing a fucking V? 
a, a, a fucking VR headset. Action with the very unique skateboard. Oh my class. god! Dragon Raja has done a great job of designing a variety of classes for different play styles. Yeah. There's also a new PvP hide and seek mode available, where players disguise themselves as different items and try not to get caught by the enemy team. Dragon Sounds Raja like also line. features very in-depth character customization that doesn't just allow physical and wardrobe changes, but also lets you define your character's personality and their responses to their surroundings. With the new update, there's tons of rewards and limited time items up for grabs for new and returning players. There's even more rewards and events waiting for you by joining the official communities linked below. So download Dragon Raja using the link in the description and join in on the action today. Download now. So the last time I played New World was during the PTR for the Brimstone Sands expansion. I didn't actually ago. play the game when the expansion fully launched, because my main server was dead due to everyone playing fresh stuff. I love to hear that. Because remember what I said about how people quit the game and they don't come back because their server's dead? It's so funny that I was right. Because it was fucking obvious. Like, it's not even any sort of, like, fucking Nostradamus. Wow, big surprise. People don't want to play an MMO whenever nobody's playing on their server. Uh, and I really didn't want to start again. I log into the game and I immediately yeah. see people spamming X egg in the chat. So I did the same thing and got invited to a 20 player raid group. Mm -hmm. If you played more than a year ago, you'd know that you couldn't make raid groups yeah. in New World previously. I haven't made a raid group. The before. max group size was five players, so straight away I was surprised yeah, and cool. happy with this change. We basically went around the map in this group and did some seasonal daily event called the Siege of Sulphur, where you protect egg from waves of mobs and get good rewards. Pretty cool, and I'm a fan of any content that brings players together in an MMO. Basically, within minutes of logging in, I was in a massive group of players doing massively multiplayer things. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Next I actually think that the outdoor, like, content for New World, like, it can be kind of bad because of, like, the, like, friction with, like, players, uh, like, running into each other and, like, spell effects. But I actually think things like chest runs are really cool. I like chest runs. I am a chest run enjoyer. And I thought they were a unique type of gameplay that New World had. And I even kind of like their events too. So I wanted to finish off getting all weapon masteries to level 20 Ooh, to prepare for the new expansion. I, probably do that. I only needed to level the greatsword and blunder. I did it exactly here too. Yep bus so i looked online for the best strat and yep. the current best method is to do this repeatable Farming thorpe thorpe. events at this area in so great cleave stupid. it was here where i stumbled Dumb upon another new shit. addition to new world augments yep. which are basically boosters that you can buy off the cash shop the most significant ones in my opinion are the weapon xp and gathering xp boosters which basically yeah, double your xp strongest. you've also got season xp and territory standing boosters which do a similar thing and a proficient booster which increases your gathering yields by 10 percent if these boosters were in the game at launch everyone would be complaining that they were paid to win and rightly so i guess the game's been out long enough at this point that most people have capped gathering and weapon masteries anyway so it's not a big deal i think it's yeah that that's that's true uh it's the same thing as in like wayfinder and i think that apparently i don't know if warframe does this too people told me that it did is that they sell you some of like the base items that you can get but anybody who's playing the game seriously at all like already has this and it's easy for them to get them and so like for most people if you played new world this wouldn't have really affected you yeah it doesn't matter exactly and so like this like I, the gathering yield i think is kind of stupid but the other ones i don't really care about that much because this is something that you would have just done as an outcome of playing the game. Either way, I popped the weapon XP yeah, booster and got great. both yeah. weapons to 20 mastery super fast at the Thorpe spot. Another nice change, if you hold control plus C and left click, you can spam click to very quickly salvage all of your crap. It's been the You'll be doing time, this a yeah. lot during your time playing New World. The next amazing change to the game since the last time I played is the addition of multiple gear sets loadouts. This was one of the most requested features to be added since launch, and I'm happy to say it actually works very well except for one caveat. The thing I love about New World's gear set system is storing gear in these templates actually removes it from your inventory, which is... Yeah, it, it makes it to where it doesn't take up weight. 
nice because if you've got three to four different gear sets, your bags would be an yeah. absolute mess it's otherwise. Really nice. The caveat here is that if you want more you than two them. gear set storage, you need to buy it off the cash shop for... Which I don't think this is really going to matter a lot um, whenever the expansion comes out. Because the reason why you would want to have multiple gear sets is for ward gear and ward gear is being removed from the game so like right now it's like one of these weird things where like i think it's kind of shitty that they sell these now but i think that whenever they make the change in the expansion this actually won't matter at all and it will have no impact on a normal player roughly five dollars so it will get better. i started working my way through the brimstone sands msq and realized i was earning season xp basically a battle pass you can work through which gives various rewards such as furniture skins gypsum currency and so on your typical battle pass love it or hate it it is what it is yeah. at least it gives players at end game something to work through once they've completed everything else i guess as i was questing through brimstone I, a battle pass like who gives a fuck I mean, like, I really, in my opinion, I wish that instead of a battle pass, they added rewards to different NPCs out in the open world, like different cosmetics to get people to, like, go out and do that. But I guess battle pass kind of achieves that in another way. I think that it's stupid to just, like, hate battle passes categorically. But whenever I have that opinion, I don't want anybody to think that I like them. I don't. Like, any time that I see there's a battle pass, I just look at, okay, what do I need to do out of this? Okay, I'll just go do this, that's it. Like, I don't get excited. Like, battle passes are not content to me, if that makes sense. Like, battle passes do not move the needle at all, one way or another, on how I feel about a game or what I do really in a game that much. Like, maybe a little bit. If I'm very invested in the game, I'll do, like, a little bit extra stuff to get the battle pass. But other than that, not so much. Sands, there were a few things going through my mind. Number one, the great sword feels way more fun and better designed than every other weapon in the game. Number two, well, uh, is that true? Hmm. Probably. I mean, like, I like the hammer. I think the hammer is pretty good too. I really like the hammer. Uh, I really like the hatchet too. I'm not a fan of the rapier, but I know a lot of people like it. I think that I feel like a lot of the weapons play very well. I think the problem really is just tuning. Like, for example, a lot of people don't play range in PvE. And I think that's a huge problem. And they're addressing this with the expansion. But like, I would, because like in, in a high level, like uh, mutations, almost everybody that plays mutations that I've seen at least videos of is playing with like a hatchet, a great sword or a great axe for, for DPS, right? And like you have maybe oh, one person with a spear for the, the, the spear does a debuff. And so you need to have the debuff. But other than that, uh, you know, you're pretty much using the same melee weapons. So I, I, I feel like I, I wish that the ranged weapons had more more value in pve two visually the game is still one of the best looking mmos out and the sound effects are best in genre and three yeah. the general movement in new world feels so fucking scuffed at times that the game so I genuinely do not know how it's this bad. It's actually impressive how bad it is. And like, I had to pause just to like make emphasis on this, that the movement and collision in New World is simultaneously some of the best and some of the worst collision in every MMO and in, in all video games I've ever played. And what I mean by that is that climbing in New World is i think one of the best designed climbing mechanisms in any mmo that i've ever played any game i've ever played i actually think the climbing of like you know for example getting up to that top area with like those two chests on it and brimstone sands feels so fucking amazing it's actually so well designed but on the other side or climbing up that big tower uh what's it called malevolence in uh in eden grove i think like that is just fucking phenomenal right but fighting against an alligator and having the alligator knock you through a fucking piece of wood and then you're fucking you're like going like this on non-stop because like the, the game doesn't know where you are uh that's so bad it's embarrassing it's awful
still feels like it's in alpha in some places. Yeah, it's really bad. Like, you still can't that. swim look, bro, in New look, World. still feels like look, it's look, in look. alpha he in some like places. He goes like this. He goes, whoop. Like, you still can't Get swim in New World. Here. Your attacks will very frequently just not register when hitting mobs. Yeah. Relentless. There's something, I think that there's something with the registry of this game. And I think there's a problem where, like, the game, the game readjusts your character based off of where the game thinks your character is. Or there's some sort of like weird fucky tech that goes on with this because it's so bad and I've never seen it any other game. This rush with the great sword is a great yeah, example it's like of this. Constant it's a double hit ability where 50% of the time only one hit will register. Look at Any that. form so of bad. slightly elevated terrain in a combat this area will make your character desync. And the actual running animation in this game feels so scuffed to me. Yeah. Like the run animation is faster than the speed you actually run. I don't know what it is, but it just looks off. Also, when you... Yeah, that does look bad. I never even noticed that. ...log into the game after playing any other third-person RPG, you just feel like yeah. New World should have a sprint, but it doesn't. I kind of wish the game did have a sprint, to be honest. But right now, my biggest issues with New World is definitely with the movement, inconsistent combat, desync. I think the combat feels shitty. That's the problem. It's like that low level combat, like fighting against the level seven boar feels great, but actually like New World, actually here's a good way to say it. The more seriously you take New World combat, the more you'll hate it. It's worse than Dark Souls 2. I continued questing through the Brimstone Sands, eventually fully completing every quest in the zone, including the side too. quests. And I have to say, when it comes to questing, New World has come a very long way. This is a game that was notoriously dog shit for questing back at launch. Every quest was go to this POI, loot crates, get item, run halfway across the map and repeat. But now it's much more varied, there's some actual story- Whoa, fighting this fucking goat. You would get to right here? And this fucking goat would spawn. And it was like, it had like this affix and it said like something like likes to headbutt or something like that. And he would headbutt you and he would knock you off. And then you would have to go back and do the entire thing over again. And the worst thing about it is that the goat dropped a really good fucking helmet. So then I had to sit there and re-farm as Prefix is pushy. Yes, yes, exactly. The, 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 the fucking affix he has, he's pushy. So I sat there and I killed this goat like 70 times. And narrative interwoven into it. There's puzzles, climbing quests, more varied enemies, quest rewards are actually decent now. Yeah. The difference is night and day from launch, and I actually consider New World's questing to be pretty good nowadays. The Brimstone Sands questing is good. It is, it is good. Uh, also, another fact is that it is uh, fully voice acted. Every quest is voice acted. Next, I did the Ennard dungeon and was quickly reminded that I do actually enjoy dungeons in New World. And I think in terms of visuals, I there's think some... this is one of the worst fights that's ever been made, by the way. ...of the most epic looking Literal dungeons garbage. in the MMO genre. I spent some time sorting through all my storage and selling stuff to free up some space for the new expansion. If you haven't played since launch, storage in New World is all connected now rather than local to each town. Yeah. Which means storage management is much less of a pain in the ass nowadays. Bags I'm assuming they probably can't do this because they're, uh... Is there a roach on my leg? There we go. I saw him on the wall a minute ago. No, oh, whatever. So yeah, uh, the fucking uh, the storage, right? I think they should just make it to where like you have one big storage rather than you have to open up each one because I find it to be kind of annoying that like I have to put like because you guys, if you played New World recently, this is probably what you did, right? Is you would put all of your leatherworking stuff in one zone and you would put all of your mining stuff in another zone, something like that. It's, it's fucking stupid. You should just have them all combined, and as soon as you discover a new area, it should just be added to your total inventory. And tools now go up to legendary 600 gear score, and will likely go higher for the new expansion. Of course. So I replaced all of my blues with legendary- It's gonna go to 700.
Which, Which by the way, I don't think 700 is high enough if they have the same scaling. I think one of the problems with New World, especially at level 60, is that you don't really feel, or like, I don't really feel like you get that much stronger after you hit 60. Like, a lot of the item perks don't really feel super great, and apparently they're fixing that with artifact level weapons and artifact items, but yeah, like, because you just go from 600 to 625. It's not enough, man set of instruments, made a gear set for healer, strength dex, and mage, then checked out another highly requested feature that's finally been added to New World. A full transmog system comparable to games like this. Guild Wars 2 and World of Warcraft, this. where you unlock the appearance of all dropped gear. There is one caveat to this though, because of course there fucking is. Basically, to actually transmog gear you need transmog tokens, which can be bought off the cash shop. 5 tokens costs like $10, so if you're constantly changing your outfit, it's not cheap. Just to clarify, once you've unlocked something once, you don't need to spend more money to reapply it again. It is permanently unlocked for you to use as a skin at any time, but for additional skins you'll need more tokens. Something that Sounds really stupid instantly pissed me off of this system is that the preview window to actually view your appearance is dog shit and depending on the time of day like nighttime for example yeah. you can't actually see the colors properly which is annoying because you definitely want to get a good look at how your character will look before committing to spending money a good point yeah I, don't, I wouldn't think it would matter that much but the fact that you have to spend money to do it uh, makes it even more annoying yes, you can also earn tokens in game how easily, though? Please improve the transmog character preview window. After that, I solo queued some 3v3 PvP arena, and despite never doing it One before, was surprisingly easy. less tryhard and more fun than I expected. I'm glad I was able to just solo queue this rather than manually find other players, otherwise I probably wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, it was quite enjoyable well. and rewarding enough that I'd definitely play it again. I spent a bit of time leveling up my music skill, which seems to have had the experience per level heavily reduced since the last time I played the game. And finally, I took on a seasonal 10 player boss, which wasn't overly difficult, oh, but it was this. fun because the rewards were good. The boss had a few mechanics, and it was easy to join a group by just Xing yeah, up in I recruitment need to go, chat. Go and do this. It seems like New World's actually making a bit of a push to more traditional MMO style raid content. As aside from the 10 player seasonal raid boss, there's also a 20 player instanced sandworm raid boss yeah. that as of making this video is apparently the hardest boss in the game and he's still really hard right like my understanding is that the sandworm fight is actually pretty hard unfortunately i haven't had the chance to do it yet as i can't find a group but it looks super cool regardless that's cool yeah you have to look up and shoot those things that are in the air that's actually really fucking badass so next let's discuss all of the info you need to know about new world's new upcoming expansion mm -hmm. rise of the angry earth First of all, this expansion will release on October 3rd alongside Season 3 and will be a paid expansion, costing $29.99. New players will be able to buy the base game plus the expansion in a bundle for $69.99. This expansion comes with a new zone. Rem That's cool. Let me see that again. Oh, this is in first light. Yeah, okay. No shot. No, I, I really don't think $30 is a big deal. Like, this is a buy-to-play game that's had multiple updates for free. Like, I, I really don't think a $30 expansion two years after the release is a big deal, guys. Remember First Light, the zone yeah. south of Windswood? Yeah, that zone no longer exists. It's fallen to the Angry Earth and will be transformed to the Elysian Wilds, completely unrecognizable from the place it was before. Yeah, Mounts are finally being light. added to New World and will come with a new trade skill called Riding, which you'll be able to level up for upgrades to speed, buffs, and higher no. tier mount consumables. Mounts will come in the form of horses, direwolves, and lions initially, with more likely to be added over time. You'll be able to name your mount and also deck it out with customizable equipment, which will undoubtedly be sold on the cash shop. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could put armor on the mount. That's badass. A new weapon will be added to the game in the form of the flail, which can be used either one-handed or with a shield. The flail scales with strength and focus, and has abilities strength that can focus. debuff enemies and absorb ally damage, making it a solid choice as a secondary for both tanks and healers from the sounds of it. 
Progression in New World will also be changed quite a bit. You'll be able to level up your character to 65, gear score will now go up to item level 700, trade skills up to 250, and the devs are completely removing the expertise system, which means there's no tedious barrier to entry grind that new players will need to go through to get decent loot. The new yeah, zones- the expertise thing was fucking stupid. Uh, like, it, 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 yeah, I mean, they, they have improved a lot of those systems, thank god, yeah, and then, like, you know, as an in-game player, like, uh, the ward system was so stupid, too. Like, you were basically farming four sets of gear with the same stats, except one stat was different, because there's a different mob type that you're fighting. Yeah, it was the most artificial playtime increase that you could possibly imagine, it was so stupid straight up drop gear that's 625 or higher yeah and the hardest content will drop the best gear yep. as it should yeah Mythic there's also going to be a new tier of faction gear new faction quest line and a new rarity of gear called mm. damn so that's an artifact item artifacts which will need to be awakened via a quest line to unlock up to yeah. six perks with one of them apparently being placed on well, a quest and a new what is this here uh so you have to kill a bunch of mobs. Okay, well, I mean, like, who gives a fuck about this? I mean, this is the exact same way that the, uh, remember, like, you would have to do the quests in order to get, like, those 580 item level weapons at the beginning of the game? I did the quest line to get, like, the, uh, the Azur Ravager, like, axe or some shit. So this is basically the same thing again rarity of gear called artifacts which will need to be awakened via a quest line to unlock up to six perks with one of them apparently being play style defining which is quite interesting yeah. there's also going to be quite a few oh, apparently being play me, style defining which like. is quite, quite interesting uh invigorated vigor shrug off i think that's the new one is that is that the new one i'm not sure um yeah that looks cool interesting there's also going to be quite a few revamps to the game the most important only 32 attributes, one more than 625. No, um, 625 is 26. 30, 31 is only from two-handed weapons. And actually it's not 625, it's 623, which is the breakpoint that takes your secondary, your, your primary stat from 25 to 26 or from 30 to 31. It's actually not true. One in my opinion is the removal of ward, bane, and resilience stats enough, on gear, which just wasn't fun, and I'm so glad to see yeah, removed. Thank God. As well as the just main storylines of both Eden Grove and Great Cleave also being revamped. That's good. Aside from that, the expansion brings with I'm it. I'm glad they're adding that because those are the two. Like you remember how they did like the one to thirty-five experience. Like, Eden Gro well, like, Great Cleave is, like, 45. So, like, they're making it to where, like, the leveling experience will just be better. New level 62 plus expedition, a new heart rune ability, yeah. a new season with events such as Night Vale, Hallow, and the Turkey Terror, as well as a bunch of They're other adding stuff. Turkey on again. Overall, after revisiting New World for a bit to prepare for the new expansion, as well as looking into all the Thank positive God. changes that will come with the expansion, I really think New World is heading firmly in the right direction, and I've actually had a decent time. I think New World has been going in the right direction for six months. But after going in the wrong direction for two years, it's going to take them a while to uh, break even. Now, I hope this expansion is where they do. And I actually think that New World is an enjoyable game right now. It's just that I wouldn't, I, I would recommend somebody, if you want to play New World right now, make sure that you play on my server. My server is uh, Marama, or it's Marinera, some fucking bullshit, some stupid fucking name. It's Marama, something like that. If you see it, you'll know what it is. Play on a very populated server. Play on a populated server with a lot of people, and you will probably enjoy the game. So far, returning to the game. At My main issue 60. with New World is still that the movement and animation feels off sometimes, as well as the inconsistency with the tax registering, and the game still not having swimming. But almost every other issue I've had with the game over the years has been resolved. And now That's with cool. the addition of mounts, improvements Ooh. to progression, large scale groups and transmog, the game seems better now than ever. So I yeah. do think it's worth jumping it's back into for the new expansion. Because even if you don't stick around long term, you'll likely get a few weeks of fun out of it at the very least. But that's it for this video. As always, let me know your thoughts on the current state of New World. Will you also be returning to the game for the new expansion? What else do you think the devs need to do to improve the game? Social media on screen, help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.
Yeah, I'm excited to play this whenever it comes out. I'm gonna play the expansion on day one, level up to 65, do the content, complain there's not enough of it. And uh, that's really what it's gonna be, man. Do I have to buy the expansion if I bought the game whenever it came out? Well, you don't have to buy the game again. I mean, you have to buy the expansion, sure, as soon as you buy any expansion. But uh, no, you don't have to, like, rebuy the game. So it's only, like, $30. Looks good on buying it. Yeah, I think it looks fine, right? Uh, I, I, I like it. I think that people that are unhappy about the $30, again, they don't ask for a sub. There's been, like, multiple free updates that have happened. Uh, you do, it, I mean, you can say free, right? It's a buy-to-play game, so you did pay for the game. But my philosophy is that whenever you buy a game, you pay for everything that's in the game at that time period, and anything that's added on top of that, I think it's fair if they want to monetize adding new content post-release. And I, I, I don't... The only thing that I don't include into that is content that was broken. So, like, fixing content that should have worked on release, I don't think you should have to pay for that. But if they're, like, adding a whole new zone like Brimstone Sands or, like, revamping First Light, adding new dungeons, increasing a new weapon, like, all your item level and, like, adding new armor types, I don't think it's really a big deal to ask people to pay $30 for this. I, I, I really don't. Especially not after, like, this isn't like a Diablo 4, like, we're having, a, you know, an expansion a year after the game comes out type situation. Like, it's been two years. I, I think this is quite fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely going to come back and play this. I'll probably try to level up all my stuff before uh, the expansion comes out and get ready for it. New World devs seem great. Game has so much potential. Well, it's getting better, right? But I do think that Lazy Peon is right that the the way that your character feels whenever it's taking damage and getting knocked around feels so insanely bad you don't even notice this when you're low level right uh, like it's not even a thing but like once you get to higher level you will notice it and it is really 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 bad so if they can fix that i don't know if they can because they have uh it's done on lumberyard which is apparently an engine that's made out of wood and so uh who knows but i think it's very telling that after, like, I think that nothing else except for New World uses Amazon's proprietary engine, uh, Lumberyard, which is like a fork of the Crisis Core engine. And the fact that, like, nobody uses it, or that they don't use it in any other game besides New World, indicates how good it really is. It's just, like, look at this. This is garbage. It's garbage. Honestly, in today's standards, New World's a pretty decent MMO. It is, but I just think the combat needs to be better. Yeah, that's all. It's the reason, only reason I'm not playing New World. Combat and Endgame is complete bullshit. It is. They've improved a lot of it. Um, like, for example, remember whenever I said... Oh, my God. So, do you remember fighting... Whenever I was fighting Thorpe in the depths? And I said that it was bad gameplay and bad design. And it was unintended that you were getting hit from behind. And I had New World Andes telling me that I was wrong. Do you remember that? They changed it. They fixed it. Explicitly, they fixed it. Because I was right. Again. This is a great video from Lazy Peon. And uh, I uh, I wonder what server is always oh, probably playing on the EU servers. So we won't have a chance to play with them. That's too bad. You still get hit from behind? Yeah, probably. But not as much. So there you go. I think that they need to uh, do a lot more. I think that New World needs to focus on like making guild events and guild stuff too, because I feel like group content in New World is very uh, minimal. And uh, you know, having things like, you know, for example, being able to build a ship or come together to build like siege weapons or something like that, like that would be great. So hopefully that happens. This is a great video. Uh, I'm glad Lazy Peon is talking about New World again. I hope the game will be good one day. One day it will be good.